Hi, just a quick update. I wanted to update people on what I'm doing currently. So over the last few days, I've been looking at um, improving my sleep cycles. So that involves looking closely at times of sunset and sunrise for every day. So I have a sunset and sunrise calendar that I follow and this is very important because I have been looking into the, the process, the field of um, optogenetics. So optogenetics, as you can probably tell, is to do with the eye. It's similar to, it's, an, it's a field within epigenetics. So I've explained epigenetics before. Epigenetics is how your environment can change your genes in basic terms. And optogenetics is essentially how light can do similar things, have similar mechanisms. We know that the brain is made up of thousands of neurons that regulate activity um, between them. And optogenetics is the is, is manipulation of this ability of the individual neuronal circuits um, where you are having uh, positive influences not only on uh, the vision but we have seen we have seen potential for Alzheimer's disease and Parkinson's disease in rodent models and we need to move this to humans, that's what I believe. Um, so what optogenetics is in the sense that we've seen currently with uh, rodents in particular is that we see um, light sensitive, we see that light sensitive proteins are taken uh, typically from algae and they are put in in these rodents, uh, usually, yeah, mice and rats. And if you do a Google search, you'll see interesting pictures of rodents with blue light fixtures. Um, it looks like they're just implanted into their skulls. It's really interesting stuff. Um, and this gives researchers the ability to control um, these uh, brain cells. And the technique, as I said, is using artificial sensors, but it makes me think of the potential for what you could do in humans. We have an interesting story, which I'll try to detail below, which is quite recent, of a human who has almost completely lost their sight. I think it may be a complete, um, complete blinding of, of the uh, ability of the retina to take in um, UV light and just light, light in general. And um, it is, uh, it has shown great potential. So this patient is being followed up and I would like to see what happens with them just not in not simply in terms of her his or her vision i can't remember if it's male or if this patient is male or female but not only in terms of their visual improvements but in their potential cognitive improvements and brain functioning as a whole that would be absolutely fascinating to see if this translates to the changes that we can see in these rodent models so it's, it's my belief that there's great potential for this field, um, for the great potential for optogenetics in humans, even by natural means. So we see lots of these cancers that are largely hormonal, like breast and prostate cancer, where they are uh, to a large degree associated with uh, circadian rhythm dysregulation, where melatonin production is happening at the wrong times and you get all these hormonal dysfunctions as a result with um, hormones such as cortisol, where it's sustained for too long a period of time, which is not good. It's a hormone that helps you to wake up in the morning, 
but we don't want this sustained cortisol production throughout the day. It's a stress hormone. We don't want all this stress. So this is, a, a sen- this is essential to optimal health. Um, so I have been trying to uh, optimize my own natural light activity day to day. Um, particularly, well, I've been trying to do this for a while, but particularly in the last few days, I've seen more success with it. Uh, in the last few days, I have been looking at the sunset and sunrise times uh, day to day. I've got a calendar where I write down where I should avoid, what time I should avoid artificial light from. And I find it quite cool watching the the sunset and the sunrise every day. I've got it down to fine art, I think. And over the last few days, I've just been feeling really rested. And it's the morning now. I feel absolutely fantastic. I don't have any symptoms of any brain fogginess or any problems that I uh, used to have intermittently throughout the day as as hormonal changes were occurring as my um, as as the cortisol was dropping and then uh, adrenaline was rising and all these hormonal changes in the brain that happen uh, these and these ionic changes that happen throughout the day I've noticed uh, better control of trace element homeostasis and not just through um, yeah trace element homeostasis and just regulation of my um, natural hormone secretion at the right times that should be should go with natural light cycles and interestingly as well over the last few days I have needed less magnesium supplementation so this is potentially I'm not sure how you could term it because it's a theoretical thing but it's potentially um, magnesium sparing (laughs) for one of a better term Um, in terms of just uh, you can get this leaky brain phenomenon in uh, people with neurodegenerative disease and epilepsy of course Um, so this regulation of natural light cycles appears to be allowing me to um, control my epileptic activity much, much more effectively without the need for my magnesium chloride administration as as administrative um, solution. And I find that just very liberating and I feel great <laughs> just uh, in in a longer for for a longer period of time and um, it's just as I say it's liberating and the potential for optogenetics is just huge I'd love to see it taken into the standard treatment uh, protocols for brain cancer management and all these other problems that we see. Um, I also found a really interesting study on control of um, hyperglycemia just through um, just through optogenetic means, and that is that has huge potential because we see that because we see that obviously glucose is a huge problem um, which the ketogenic diet tries to remedy Um, it can't do it successfully completely because we also have um, amino acids fueling cancer cells uh, in particular with the brain we have uh, glutamine, which is the big one, uh, we have arginine, and we have methionine as well. So these amino acids are essential um, 
things that we need to be aware of and to try to modulate in some way. It would be interesting to see if optogenetics can help with that as well. And this is something that I am studying more of and I will attempt to write about. It's something that I would like to do my final year project on as well at university. So I feel this could be even more important than diet. Um, Maybe not so, not more important than DHA. I think they go together. I think there's a lot of um, associative um, benefits that you can see as a, a symbiotic relationship with DHA and light, um, the right kind of light at the right times, obviously, um, from the sun, UV light. Um, same with vitamin D. Um, and vitamin D supplementation. It's obviously better to get it from uh, UV light than from a nutritional supplement. So all of this is really interesting. I look forward to writing more about and studying more uh, in the in in opti opti <laughs> in optogenetics. I look forward to sharing more information about that. I'll try and put some interesting studies down there. And yeah, it's something that I am getting more and more passionate about and more and more excited and interested with because I don't believe that the ketogenic diet is enough. I think that metabolic therapy needs to encompass all of these aspects of epigenetics and health. Uh, it's not just nutrigenomics, it's, it's um, things like optogenetics and things like your air quality, which is why hyperbaric oxygen therapy is really important as well, and why it's important to continually be in areas that are devoid of all this pollution and just chemical, horrible chemicals as well. Uh, people who work with chemicals are more likely to have lung cancer and, and types of uh, brain cancer as well. Uh, we see that particularly in cancer clusters um, like McCullum Lake. I'll post uh, some information below about McCullum Lake and how uh, that's a huge cancer cluster in the US, but that um, that's a whole other thing. Uh, um, I think optogenetics is my main focus at the moment and it has huge, huge benefits, uh, huge potential for all these neurodegenerative diseases, uh, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes maybe, um, and all these health problems of modern life, particularly where we have the most artificial light. Um, so yeah, huge potential and I will have my very busy day today and then I will study some more on optogenetics and hopefully I can apply these methods and hopefully I've given you some, often say food for thought, maybe light for thought, I don't know, <laughs> but uh, something to think about, shed some light on the subject, I guess uh, we could say. So I will see you on another day, at another time, and uh, have a nice day.